Is this something that is, uh, you know, actually, as I hope it will be, a big jump forward and their vision for the future for the next 10, 15 years? Or is it just more talk of what they might do, the models that might come out, what they, you know, aspirationally will, uh, will try to do? Okay, a quick video uh, in between the fully charged stuff here to talk about GM EV Day, which is uh, on Wednesday, March 4th, for a couple of days before it here. But uh, I, it's supposed to be for investors and uh, to lay out the roadmap for uh, GM's EV future, which is good because even as a two-time Bolt lessee, we're still getting the uh, trucks, SUVs, Chevy Malibu, all these combustion cars, and then we get to this the uh the bolt tv which we are clearly involved with you know the uh we're clearly on board with the car even when you get the um the bolt tv specific literature just incompetent marketing department the same people that send you an oil change uh promotion for your electric vehicle but it, it's really not good enough at this point well this gm ev day is intended to kind of uh lay out the future i hope it will move beyond just talk and press releases and concept cars well, but as they say, talk is cheap. We want to see, you know, we're in 2020 now. We've moaned for a long time about, you know, the Bull TV has been first to market as the first, you know, affordable electric vehicle with more than 200 miles, but that was in 2016. So, so you know, there's, there's a lot to do to even get in the same ballpark as Tesla in a lot of ways. Um, this car beat the Model 3 to market as the affordable option um, with, you know, 200, 250 miles of range. So, it got that, but since 2017, it's just kind of stood still. Obviously in the 2020 here, we are in a car that can now do 10% uh, more miles, you know, so we're at 259 miles, which still leads the non-Tesla pack in terms of, you know, cars that are available around that 30, 35K price point uh, that can do this kind of range. So it still has that in its favor. But what can we expect? Can we expect it to go beyond the corporate speak? If you look at the videos that they've put out in promotion with this, uh, it's, it's futuristic. They're talking about, you know, um, the 2039, which sounds awful <laughs> as a timeline, but the 2039 is symbolic because 1939 was their uh, World's Fair presenting a future vision for interstates, cars that would take you across the country, um, affordable, you know, vehicles, that kind of thing. And that's kind of where we're at with uh, electric vehicles. You know, we can get across the country, of course, but, you know, it's slower. It's not necessarily in all the form factors you want it to be in. And they're talking about a bunch of different things. So in this video, we'll take a look at will they, what can we expect to see at GM, GM EV Day um, in a couple of days. We'll uh, hang some predictions out there. Will be an opportunity to either come back and say, hey, got it right. Or to laugh in my face and say, ha ha, you ridiculously predicted GM was going to make any progress at all. So... I will take the lumps if that's the case, but I have a feeling this is going to be something that will, if not wow the industry, certainly give them a pause for thought and make people a little more confident in what GM's going to have to offer for electric vehicles going forward. Uh, number one, I think uh, we'll finally get the roadmap that we've been looking to have for GM's 20 models. It may not be all 20, but I think they will clearly delineate. This is what's going to happen with Cadillac. This is what's going to happen with the GMC line. And this is what you can expect from Chevrolet electric vehicles based on the Bolt platform and maybe some others that we uh, we see coming up. We expect a, uh, a Bolt EV uh, mid-cycle refresh for 2021 that's probably going to be part of the uh, um, announcement you would also expect to see something about the uh, bolt euv if that's what it's called but the larger bolt crossover on a similar platform um, and just generally we should get a much better roadmap of the f the brands that uh, they have and uh, where they will fit within the all-electric future that they tout so frequently 
And the second thing would obviously be, you know, flow from having a bunch of models, different models coming out. You need uh, a next generation platform to uh, sit them on this, uh, you know, the Bolt EVs have sat on the BEV2 platform. It's worked perfectly well for an end of, uh, you know, 2015 to 2020 kind of period. Um, BEV3 is the platform that they'll uh, put a lot of these, especially the Cadillacs and the GMC Hummer. That platform is what those models will sit on hopefully, and there's been some pretty, you know, um, exciting stats from that. 300 miles range is about par for the course at the moment. It's still aspirational for a lot of non-Tesla uh, manufacturers, but that's been described as the minimum. You know, engineers around the company seem to have been saying 400 miles, and also the other key aspect of that, you know, with range comes fast charging speed. How quickly can it charge and how far will it go? The BEV3 platform, we've been looking at, uh, we've been hearing kind of 15 minutes uh, fast charging, 200 miles in 15 minutes. That would be, you know, from the Bolt TVs, 100 miles in 30 minutes. You know, obviously you're looking at a 4x increase, really. And if you can get 200 miles in 15 minutes, you're getting very close to uh, to where gas is. That's a significant improvement, and that puts them very close to that marker where people say, I won't drive it unless I can recharge in the same time as I can fill up gas. And that's close, wow. you, know, you know, fingers crossed for that. That's probably... The most important part, I mean, obviously we need models, we want to know what's coming, but that the platform that it sits on is going to inform GM's, um, you know, what capabilities and specs for the next uh, 10 years, probably. So if we can get those specs anywhere close, we'll be in good shape. So the third prediction, um, we should be seeing something about uh, charging infrastructure. I don't subscribe to the notion that uh, GM or any other legacy automaker has to build out a nationwide network or a continental network in any particular market they serve. Um, I think Electrify America has done that to an extent. It's still, you know, not wide enough and there are areas that aren't served well enough, um, but this is still early days. So I see Electrify America as a, a long-standing prospect. EVgo as, you know, having just opened its 800th uh, charging station is right in the mix there as well. You have ChargePoint as a, an option for anybody, you know, individual stakeholders and properties who want to install um, fast charging equipment. And then there's also GM's uh, partnership with Bechtel, which uh, they weren't putting, you know, lots of money into, but the, the data that they have from, you know, however many Bolt EV drivers we have going around there now, um, you know, across the nation and up into Canada, um, there's there's a lot of data that they can bring to the table. I'm not saying that's good enough necessarily. Obviously, when you look at what Chevy offers at uh, dealerships, you know, you're coming across half-speed chargers at 25 kilowatts. You're, uh, whether or not it's in a place where you can get to it, it may be restricted within the service department. The one at our local dealership is broken right now, so nobody is touting the dealership network as anything other than kind of a, a backup or a last resort at the moment. Um, and I, But I don't foresee it becoming somewhere people want to charge on a regular basis. There are not that many dealerships that I would think of um, that are in great places to be charging when you want to maybe shop or have food or even just a rest break. You know, it's a very kind of haphazard place to charge. Um, so I don't see that being something they necessarily need to do, but they do need to bring data to the table and say this is where, you know, we see Bolt EV ownership spiking, this is how long people charge, this is the kind of property and uh, area that they want to do the charging and how long they'll stay when that happens. Um, so they have something to bring to the table, I just don't think it has to be, um, you know, them providing the funds for a national charging network. And the fourth prediction, although it's uh, often overlooked or not uh, considered the most, um, you know, sexy part of the uh, electric vehicle space, is simply the battery production. Uh, where are they going to get all these batteries from? Um, that uh, is a pretty big focus for Tesla right now, with uh, Battery Day coming up in spring, um, and it's going to be a big part of you know, probably powering forward uh, all the models that are announced and the BEV3 platform that we talked about. All this stuff is going to be uh, contingent upon do they have enough battery supply to uh, to put into the vehicle in the first place to produce enough uh, to meet demand and effort in Lordstown, Ohio, not far from where they used to build the cruise. 
um, which is now Lordstown uh, Motors, um, interestingly, which will produce a, a pickup truck. But more importantly for GM EV Day, uh, will they tell us about the uh, $2.3 billion that's going into Lordstown? Uh, more about the partnership with LG Chem. Um, they're talking about uh, 30 gigawatt hours of capacity there, uh, but how quickly will that ramp up uh, so once you get into the, the really popular vehicle segments of uh, SUVs, pickup trucks, plus those batteries are bigger, so they'll need more cells, and that's uh, more production. So we'll pro probably see a lot, even though it won't get as many headlines. We should see a lot about uh, Lordstown. Um, so I'd expect big investment there, and quite a big focus, actually, on um, on how that will progress, how quickly they'll be ramping that facility up, and what we can expect to see there. Whatever your opinion of GM EVs and uh, whatever your expectations from GM EV Day, uh, let us know in the comments. Let us know what your basic minimum for a, a GM EV or any other EV. Do you need 300 miles and uh, slightly faster charging? Or are you, uh, if it doesn't go coast to coast on a single charge and recharge in less time than it takes mm -hmm. to get out of the car, uh, I'm never buying an electric vehicle. Uh, let us know. All opinions welcome. And uh, yeah, we'll have a conversation in the comments. Thanks for watching. And uh, yeah, look forward to... GM EV Day on March the 4th.